All right, so it's the day after. We're back at the dock here at the fillet table. And uh, like I said, you know, we didn't uh, set the world on fire, but we did catch a few yellowtails. Riley caught one nice porgy. So we're gonna go ahead and get those filleted up and then we're gonna move inside of the kitchen. I've got a pretty cool, simple dish that I wanna show you guys on how I love to prepare uh, these yellowtail snapper. So here we go. All right, so I wanna try something, like I said, a little different here. Uh, Bubba's got this new retractable, uh, re retractable, or I should say replaceable, interchangeable blade system knife uh, that is really, really clever. Um, so this blade, you just quickly pop it out just like that. Take this other blade. You can see here how much more flex that has which is nice, or should be nice, as I'm told, uh, when it comes to skinning the fish. Oh, wow, yeah. I mean, that just goes right under that fillet. Not that there was anything wrong with the other blade, but, I mean, that is super clean in terms of how it took that off. So, I'm just gonna pop that out really quick again, set it to the side. Flip over to the other side of the fish. I like the stiffer blade when you got to go through a little bit more of the meat and the skin. Stronger blade, stiffer blade, I guess I should say. There we go. Flip. Swap. And Wow, that is nice. I wish I had discovered this beforehand because that is too easy. Even for an average filet guy like myself. All right. Eh, what the heck, I still got it in there. Let's see how it goes right through here. Use that. Let's go ahead and take that bloodline and the rest of those bones out there we go another fillet like that boom on the down hill stretch here right now guys All right, yellow tail done. And here's that porgy, which uh, last night was caught on the chicken rig. And we had two different styles of, rod, uh, of rigs going between basically the small jigs and the flat lines for the yellow tail, and then these uh, chicken rigs. So. Uh, if you want to see as far as the chicken rig is concerned, if that's not something you're familiar with, uh, if you'd like to see a future video on how we create that rig, uh, just throw a, a comment in the video and let us know and we'll be happy to try and make that happen for you. I haven't played one of these guys in a while. Let's see how this system works. The same way on the yellow tail here. Some bones in there I can feel. There we go. Now I'm where I need to be. Look how white that meat is. I mean, that's gonna be mm, delicious. Just get up there just like that. There we go. Sometimes I like to use my hands here, right there on the head, just for leverage as I'm kind of filleting down the backbone of that fish, like so. There we go. Give her a flip. 
one more time. We'll swap that out because I like the way this blade works so well on the skinning of the fish. I mean, this meat, guys, is so white, it is almost translucent. I mean, you can even look comparison-wise. Obviously, yellowtail is a white meat. Look at the meat on that porgy, which is to my right. A lot of people don't know how tasty they are to eat. It has the old, uh, what was it, the old rap song goes? I can't remember uh, who sang it. If you don't know. Oh, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Doggy Dogg. If you don't know, now you know. Oh, Biggie Smalls? Jazz corrected me. Sorry, guys. See that? I am not educated as educated in my hip hop historical culture as I should be. If you don't know, now you know those two Biggie Smalls, the notorious B I G. All right. One more little section of bone to remove here from this guy, like so. Got a little bit of rib cage right there. Come on. And we have ourselves not a huge pile of fish, but we've got certainly plenty for lunch here. So I'll see you back in the kitchen in a few minutes and we're gonna show you how we turn this into a delicious yellowtail sandwich. See you soon. Welcome to Casa de Bun. We are here in the kitchen. And yes, in fact, your eyes are not deceiving you. It is a cozy kitchen. But small does not mean that we can't deliver delicious. And uh, what I really like about this little recipe that we're gonna share with you guys here today is that it's both simple and it's delicious. Very easy to do. So uh, the ingredients that uh, basically are gonna go into this thing, I've got uh, some limes. Uh, seasoning wise, uh, we've got some Italian breadcrumbs and a little bit of Paul Perdome's uh, Seafood Magic. Um, I've got some milk in the fridge. We're gonna be pulling the fish out here momentarily. And then uh, we got some fresh tomatoes and some slices of provolone cheese, which I'll keep you in suspense. Those are the main characters of the dish. Grab the milk. And so basically what we're gonna do with this fish, the first thing that we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna pour this milk in here. And I am gonna take these fillets of fish. We're gonna drop them down in the milk. We're ready to go back to the fridge. So I'm gonna let those fillets um, Soak in the milk in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes. Now, while that is going on, we'll go ahead and at least get our fruits and veggies cut here. Lemon wise, you can just quarter those or cut them in half. All I'm going to do is use these to squeeze some fresh lemon on the fish when we season it up. And then these are some off the vine tomatoes. All right, so we got our maters sliced. We got our lemons cut. And we'll stick those in the fridge to keep them cold. And so uh, now we just got to wait for a few minutes. Uh, like I said, uh, 45 minutes is recommended on the, the fillets um, in the milk. 
So stand by, and once uh, we're ready to pull that out of the fridge, we'll take you to the next step. Well, our time is up in the fridge with those fillets. They've been soaking in the milk for about 45 minutes. So I am gonna bring them right out here, and we are on to the next step. So got uh, the Italian breadcrumbs, as I said, uh, poured those into this bowl here. Now I'm just gonna take those fillets right out of the milk. Just gonna douse them. And those breadcrumbs, plate right there. Now, uh, this is, as I said, the Paul Perdome's uh, Seafood Magic. I was actually looking for some Old Bay. I thought I had it in the cabinet and I don't. I'm just gonna lightly hit these fillets with a little bit of this seafood magic as well. Fresh lemon squeeze. And there you have it. That is prepped and ready to hit the oven. Uh, we're gonna bake these in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes, and then I have a final step from there. So stand by until we get the oven to temp. All right. There we have it. We are ready to hit the oven. We're gonna stick these guys in at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. And take those out of the oven in about 10 minutes. They should be delicious. And we have one more step after that before we're ready to put them in our belly. All right, that sound is our 10 minute timer. So next step, I'm gonna pull these fillets out of the oven. Looking good. Now, you remember those tomatoes we cut, right? They're coming out. This is where this thing really gets good. All right. Just take the tomato, layer it on top, just like that. Right there on top. Now, if you're wondering why I've left a couple of those naked, it's because I happen to have a couple of youngsters in the house that don't like tomatoes, which is a crime. So we're gonna leave theirs without. The provolone cheese comes right on top like so. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. There we go. Now all we do, we take this, and we're gonna go right back in the oven at 350 for about another five minutes. And when that's all said and done, these bad boys are gonna be ready to plate up on these delicious potato roll buns, which I just buttered up a little bit. And I'm gonna brown them in the skillet. You can or you can't, personal preference. And uh, we'll be ready to go. I've got, uh, I've got some mayo that I'm gonna hit uh, these sandwiches with as well um, when they go on the buns. Tartar sauce is an option, plain is an option. And the last thing that I'll tell you is, if you wanna skip the bread thing, the no carbohydrates, these fillets with just the tomato and the provolone by themselves are delicious also. So five minutes and we're ready to eat. All right, buzzer number two just went off. So that means it's go time. 
you even got here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at those beauties. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Sandwiches are up. Caught a couple of buns toasting here in the pan. So grab one. Go. Get a little mayonnaise there for the top. We'll spread that around. Nothing complicated there. Here we go. It's overflowing the side of the bun, which I like. Is that where I just chop it off? Now for the moment of truth. We've got fish, we've got tomato, we've got cheese, we've got bread. Mmm, wow. So good. Mmm. I give it a 10 out of 10. So. All I can say is, if you like snapper, if you like tomato, and if you like cheese, you're gonna love this, and it's simple and easy to do. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Uh, Jamie Bunn, again, Fish Blue Water. Uh, it's been a great time, and uh, as we always say, we love to get feedback from you guys on some of the stuff you'd love to see us out there on the water doing, whether it's on my boat or out with other teams or other professionals. So uh, throw a comment up on the videos, uh, DM us on Instagram, message us on Facebook, any of that kind of stuff, at Fish Blue Water. And of course, always make sure that you're subscribed to the channel for that new video every Thursday. We'll see you next time on Fish Blue Water.